Hi everyone, my name's Mad Matt Lugos and welcome back to Life is Strange episode 4, The Dark Room. So, last time we, we spent a lot of time with Chloe in the new reality where her father's still alive, where William's still alive, and but Chloe was in a car accident and is uh, permanently uh, paralysed. Um, broken back, I think it was. Um, so it was a bit emotional, a bit of a bit emotional, really, seeing how her life had changed and how really she's on death's door as her conditions worsening and her respiratory system um, is failing. And she asked us to to kill her, essentially, to to turn off her life support or oh, no overdose, or it was. I refused just because I feel like. I don't know. It, I don't think she's as close to the end as she thinks she is, and you know we're going to be hopefully be able to change time. So that's where I left it. It was a bit of a cliffhanger. <laughs> so now we are going to try and right our wrong, which will unfortunately uh, probably end up with William dying. I wonder if Max is going to try some sort of bartering with William in the past to make him, you know, make some make some silly promise, you know, I'll never give Chloe your car keys or something like that. Uh, never buy her a car or something like that. But uh, let's see if we can actually go back, because we might not be able to go back. I'm sorry, William. Ugh. <sighs> Someday Dad will get one of them newfangled computers. I hope the flash didn't scare you, Max. This is a keeper. Hello? Hey, honey. What? Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Shit, where are my keys? That's a dollar for the swear jar. You mean your college fund? Aha! Uh -huh. You can't hide from me forever. And no Chloe and Max wine tasting session. Dad! Don't blow it, because tonight your mother promised to make us a world-famous salmon surprise with chocolate cake for dessert. Max, you'll be here too, right? He's never leaving me. That makes all of us. Max, you are being so fucking strange. Like, you're never gonna see us again. Chloe, I'm so sorry. I tried to make things different for you. I, I did try. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but come on. You have made things different, like, my whole life. You're my best friend. I've got you and a great family. What's to be sorry for? We'll be best friends forever. And when we grow up, we're taking over the world. Listen, whatever happens, I want you to be strong. Even if you feel like I wasn't there for you. Because I will never abandon you, Chloe. I'll always have your back. Always.
Chloe, you're back. Whoa, whoa, down, Max. You get one kiss and now you're all over me? I'm just... I'm just... I'm so glad you're here. You sound high, but thanks for the morning grope. Since we were up all night playing CSI Arcadia Bay, I was still spaced out here trying to put all this info together. Max, did you forget we've gone over this? I hope you weren't messing around with time while I was sleeping. Not anymore. I'm just spaced out too. Welcome back to the real world, Max. I don't think I can ever tell Chloe about what happened. Oh, God. Well, Max fixed it at least. Poor William. So we're going to need to read our diary here to, to catch up. Um, is this. Did we read these? Feel like we were up to there. Uh, um, all right, I'm just going to read from here anyway. So, so today. I finally found out what was in David's secret files, and I admit, I expected it to be worse. I'm relieved that it wasn't, so maybe I'm going easier on him than I should. No surprise that he had detailed files on Kay and Rachel listing their whereabouts, along with surveillance pictures. David isn't off my shit list yet, but he's a damn good investigator, I'll give him that. It's clear that Frank and Rachel had some kind of relationship, and I don't think Chloe's going to be very happy to hear that. She needs to start waking up. We all do. When David came home, things escalated quickly. He looked more upset than usual, but shrugged when he saw me wearing Rachel's clothes. He was so on edge. Maybe I'll never get to see the David that Joyce loves so much. She and Chloe really let him have, let him have it. Have it, though. This was the first time I saw them bond since we were kids. But my spidey sense told me that David needed somebody to defend him, even just this once. I just don't feel that, like, feel that we have enough proof to really blame him for everything. Yeah, he's a harassing bully with a surveillance fetish, but he seems to be gathering information for his own investigation. The mystery s story side of me appreciates that and hopes we can use his research to buffer our own. That is what I thought. I, I don't feel like he's the one. Despite David's evidence in the bracelet, Chloe refused to believe that Rachel was involved with Frank. This is a part of Chloe I don't much like. She gets so damn petulant if she doesn't get her way, or if she hears something she doesn't like. Serious denial. I get why, but that doesn't make dealing with it any easier, so I threw my hands up and suggested we check out Frank's RV. I knew that would piss Chloe off and she would do anything to find out what kind of relationship he had with Rachel. But first we had to get the damn keys to the RV, which meant going into the Two Whales Diner and bouncing like a rewind pinball between Frank, Nathan Prescott and Officer Berry and fucking with all of them. I'm dizzy thinking about how I pulled it off. Yay for Max. Sometimes I feel like I'm just cheating at life. The first thing we had to do was get Frank's scary dog out of the RV. So we did the classic cartoon give a dog a bone routine and Cujo became Scooby-Doo just like that. Frank's RV was pretty much what I expected, drug dealer trash chic. But it wasn't a serial killer as I feared. We ransacked the place and found what Chloe didn't want us to find. I'm sorry Chloe had to see the pictures of Rachel posing for Frank, even if she did care about him. To her, it's just another betrayal, just another loved one dumping on her. Everybody she ever loved... Everybody she ever loved, she lost one way or another. Only I came back from the past. For what? To make Chloe's life more painful? I just wish I could use my rewind power to go all the way back to the days when we were covered in pancake flour. Life was simple. Let's never do the time warp again. I can't even begin to explain what happened. I think too hard about the ramifications. If I think too hard about the ramifications, my brain might melt. 
When I try to describe it, it's as if I'm describing something that happened to someone else. Chloe was so upset when we discovered that Rachel had actually been involved with Frank Bowers. She and she just blew up. I can never talk to her when she's like this and I got so tired of having to walk on eggshells around her emotions. She still blames William for her messed up life no matter how much she knows she's being unfair. I can't say that I wouldn't be just as messed up. Not that I'm not in my own way. In my room all I could think was I wish I could go back in time and help Chloe. And suddenly I was looking at the photograph William had taken of us on the day he died. And it started pulsing like it was 3D, like I could see inside the photograph. Then I found myself actually back in the photo to when I was 13 years old. I was back in Chloe's kitchen in the year 2008 with Chloe and William, right before he left to pick up Joyce for the last time. Since my powers somehow morphed to this new level of rewind, I decided that there was no way I was going to let William die again. So I played hide the keys until he had no other option but to take the bus. I was so happy that I actually saved William. I never thought about what could go wrong. I knew I was screwed when I came out of my epic rewind and saw Victoria Chase, but now she was my friend and I was a member of the Vortex Club, enough said. I knew I had screwed up and then I felt sick thinking about what might have changed with Chloe. I had a clue when I saw David Madsen driving the school bus. He sure didn't look so threatening anymore. I didn't want to know how he ended up as a bus driver instead of with Joyce. I felt my heart drop when I rushed to Chloe's house. So when William opened the door, I prepared myself for the worst. That's when Chloe rolled forward in her wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. I didn't even know what to say, so I covered my mouth in my typical gesture of shock and stupid. But Chloe's smile was so genuine and beautiful, I almost cried. I had to adjust to everything without freaking out or telling Chloe that I actually altered time and space to save her father, but get her in a car accident so she can never walk again. The thing is, she was still Chloe just minus all the rage. This Chloe was just grateful to be alive and have her family watching over her. Chloe begged me to spend the night and of course I did. I noticed how run down parts of their home were compared to before and saw the incredible expensive equipment that Chloe now requires including her new garage room. Sorry David. Even though I felt awful and disconnected, Chloe was just so bubbly and excited to hang out with me again, especially since I flaked on her pretty hardcore after, after her accident. Even in an alternate universe, I'm a shitty friend. Chloe's world was so new and unique to me, especially her strength and kindness and pain. She needed a whole pharmacy to get through the day. I didn't feel sorry for her, I felt in awe with her attitude. This Chloe didn't blame anybody for her condition even though she had the right. We strolled down the beach and saw the beach whales that proved something bad was happening in both realities. And then Chloe asked me to put her to sleep. The accident left her body pretty much broken. Her lungs stopped working properly and she was basically dying a slow, painful death. She also felt so guilty about her parents' sacrifice and dwindling income. She wasn't erratic or tortured about this request, just practical, which made me feel even more terrible for putting her in this situation. But there was no way I was going to help my best friend take her own life. I couldn't do it, especially after what happened with Kate. I know I should have done whatever Chloe asked of me considering I was responsible for her situation, but how could I inject her full of morphine and just watch her fade away? I knew she I know she was upset but I just had to tell myself that this reality wasn't real. After my visit to Chloe's new world I knew it was time to go max to the future. I had seen the result of my temporal tampering and got scared thinking my new power wouldn't even work anymore. That would have been cruel karma. Fortunately I was able to project myself into the photograph once again and I undid everything I had done. Goodbye William again. Hello David again. Oh. Okay, so this is all stuff we miss. Missed. Sorry I got in your face today and took out my bullshit rage on my best friend. Chloe, I understand. You're going through a lot. We all are. Besides, I threw your beanie out the window and busted out my rewind. <laughs> okay, that is one of your 
get out of jail emo, get that's one of your get out of emoji jail free cards but we, we need to stock up on six coffee and candy for an all-nighter we have to get into rachel and kate detective mode excellent dear watson i'll bring my thinking cap no worries i have a beanie i'll swing by and pick you up sweet i'll be ready and that was no emoji dad Alright. Hey honey, I got a weird text warning to me that my nosy daughter better start watching others and look out for herself. Is this kind of school some kind of school prank and it's from a block number? Oh, I'm so sorry. Some jackass in my class thought that would be funny to send. It's not. I don't like strangers having my number, okay? Me neither, sorry. I'm just being a dad. I know this has been a tough week for you. It's almost over. I'll call you guys later. God, is that Nathan? Juliet. Hey, Max. I hope you're okay after everything. You might be busy, but feel free to call me any time. Hey, Juliet. Are you busy? No time to be busy. You never text me. What's going down? Besides everything, I was just curious if you ever heard of a guy named Frank who lives in an RV around town. You mean a van down by the river? I heard he's, sketchy. he's, he's a sketchy meth head. That's about it. Why? Are you doing your own in investigation without my help? No, I'm just bored. Talk soon, thanks. Okay, but you can't keep secrets from Ace Reporter Juliet Watson. Hello? Justin. Sorry, my phone was in my bag. Hey Justin, you busy? Max Wax, I'm busy blazing, what up? Do you know Frank Bowers? Drugs, that's it. Ask Nathan, he knows him I think. Okay, I'm on it, thanks Justin. For what? Kate. Hey Max, how are you? I hope you can still visit me this week. I have some important things to talk about. Of course, I'm still coming to visit you. You can't stop me. I miss you and my bunny. We all miss you. And your bunny misses you. Yeah, you're such a great friend. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you. Um, thanks for letting me gush over my Blackwell hero. I miss your voice. We're so proud to... We're very proud to milk this moment. Let us know if you want to come up for a quick getaway, okay? We love you, Maxine. Maxine, what the hell is going on with the weather up there? Are they doing military tests or something? You're right in the eye of the storm. Yes, I even killed my plant, Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. Get another. One plant was stressful enough. Now back to the books. Talk soon. And Warren? Okay, where was the last thing he sent? B fucking minus. I got a B minus on my chemistry test. How did this happen? I don't know. Who is this? Ouch. Warren the wounded. The B minus. It burns. I wish I could have helped you, but I thought you were blinded by science. In this case, yes, my folks will shit. Let's look at the big board and see all our pieces in the puzzle so far. There's Chloe's cash stash. Yeah. Sorry, Principal Wells. I'm so sorry, William. It's not fair you had to die twice. Too soon. I should have known just erasing that phone message wouldn't stop the police. Miss Price. This is Officer Anderson Berry, and since we have your contact information on file here, we'd like you to come by the station on Monday morning at approximately 8am to answer a few questions about any information you may have regarding a recent break-in at Blackwell Academy and the fact that your car was identified in the parking lot around the same time. We look forward to clearing this up. Uh-oh. This butterfly photo seems like a million years ago. Huh. How much time have I altered since? What's that? That's oh, snow, snow glow. always makes me think of William and Chloe. Oh, poor William. That's my Chloe. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Still 
so close yet so far away. We have to do three main things. Right. Um, what things? Uh. One, decipher Frank's logbook. Two, get Nathan's phone to find out where he's been during the Vortex Club parties with Kate and Rachel. And see whatever hidden shit he's got in his messages. Three, beat Step Douche Dan until he tells us about Frank, Nathan, and the Dark Room. And I do have a gun now. Keep it in your pants. We'll have to do this on our own. Dude, at least let me kick his ass, then rewind. <sighs> Fine, whatevs. It's your power. Mm. Which I can't waste on shit like that. Or Blackwell would be in big trouble. At least you let me take that money to pay Frank off. <sighs> Don't remind me. I just want him off your back. Our back. I know. You should get busy in the garage to see what dirt you can dig up. I'm gonna cyberstalk some names and see where that leads. Or to who. And be careful of Stepcrack. Unless you want to hang out with him after you stood up for his ass yesterday. Be oh, quiet. please. So is he here? I can't abuse this level of my rewind power. It's way too dangerous, and I need to navigate the present without messing up the past. All right, let's go to... Oh, no. That poor little bird has been trapped in here. Birdie. Oh, Mr. Fly, Bird. Be free. Enjoy your freedom, Mr. Bird. Since David might be in there, oh. I better mosey along for a change. Well, it's good to be back in our normal reality. Let's head yep. into the garage. Locked from the other side. Oh. Wish. Oh. Yo, yo, Max. Your friend Chloe texted me that I'm out of the loop now. She sounds hot, I, so I get why. Chloe actually texted you? I sure didn't have her number. Now I get why you didn't want to go out with me. You should go with Chloe. She looks cool enough for you. I have a lot of cool friends like you do. Like you. Yes, you do. Just my look. I'm mine. I have to jet. Talk to you later. What? <laughs> How serious was Chloe being? Courtney? Oh, God. Hey, girlfriend. Let me know when you want to come by my room and I'll give you a fashion makeover. Go easy on the caps lock, Courtney. Oh, thanks, Courtney. I'm swamped with homework, but now I'll check in with you later. Thanks again for the offer. No, thanks. I'll read those when it's a bit more. The most expensive restaurant in town? David knows how to get on Joyce's good side. Endless wine. <laughs> Let's have a little reflection. Somehow I existed in this whole other reality, but I, I don't know what happened. The more I use my power, the more I see how little control I have over what happens. Now Max Caulfield exists in two or maybe three different realities. How can I have a destiny? I wonder if Chloe would hate me for keeping her alive. But I couldn't do it. Thinking about all these lifelines almost makes my head hurt worse than the rewind. Um, at least you managed to correct it. Come on, Max. Oh, this is open. 
Oh. It looks like David finished his car repairs. Maybe there's some new clues around. He stood right there. Oh, well, maybe we're in his good books. But this is my official man cave, so no girls allowed. Uh, hello. Anything I can do for you, Max? I... I was just waiting for Chloe to get out of the bathroom so we can go. I owe you one. So I'll pretend what you just said is true, Missy. <laughs> Excuse me. That's Miss Caulfield. Yes, sir. You and Chloe still better be careful where you wander. There are a lot of dark places in Arcadia Bay. What do you mean by dark places? I can't tell you everything that's going on at Blackwell. And you've seen too much already, so please stay out of this, Max. Too late. I already know way too much. So, do you and Nathan Prescott... That little shit-ass Nathan Prescott is lucky he only got suspended. I don't think luck had anything to do with it. I could have been suspended, too. I didn't have all the evidence at the time. I... I am sorry, Max. Anyway, I think we can both agree it's been a hard week on all of us. Especially poor Kate Marsh. I tried to help her. I tried to help Kate. You did, Max. You saved her life like a hero while I left the goddamn dorm roof wide open. I knew Kate was feeling desperate. You even made it to the roof before me or anybody. I knew Kate was desperate, too. So did Mr. Jefferson. That guy is an elitist prick. And I'm off duty, so I can say it at home behind his back. <laughs> like when Chloe calls me step douche. These artists live in a fantasy world. He isn't like this. No, I think he is. Why well, say that? Why do you say that? These art farts are all about themselves. When I was in the service, I hated the photographers who tried to pose me in their anti-war bullshit. Well, Blackwell Academy is a school for artists, so maybe this isn't the best place for you. I have a family here, Max, and I think Blackwell is the best place for me, since only I know what's happening. That's why I'm working out the new Blackwell surveillance plan to protect future students so they don't end up like Rachel Amber and Kate Marsh. Although, you're like a walking surveillance system. I appreciate you standing up for me, but I have to be a hard ass and tell you and Chloe to stay the hell out of this. Things are just going to get more ugly. Chloe and I can take care of ourselves. Now, excuse me, Max. I have to get back to my camera. See, I'm an artist, too. Yeah, I don't think he's that bad. I don't totally trust David, but he's not a real step fearer. Maybe Chloe will see that someday. What the hell did David do for Nathan? And what did his dad do for David? Thank you for your help with Nathan. It is appreciated. Oh, what? This is all so confounding. I'm just going to look at this. I promise I'll help Miss Grant next time. If there is one. As per our discussion about the new campus surveillance system, Miss Grant has informed me that her petition was only one avenue of protest. While we initiate this new era of Blackwell security, we must find a middle ground between safety and privacy for our students. Surveillance cameras at Pan Estates? David must be working for the Prescotts too. Mm -mm. No, hang on, let me just... Surveillance cameras at Pan Estates? David must be working for the Prescotts, too. My official man cave, so no girls allowed. Right, so maybe we can ask him about that. Oh, that makes me sad. It was so incredible to see William again. I wish Chloe could, too. Alright, so I guess we can ask him about that.
By dark. I can't tell you. Too late. I already know way too much. Like the fact that you might be working for Sean Prescott. Oh. What? Who told you that? Nathan Prescott? That little shit ass is lucky he only got suspended. I don't think luck had anything to do with it. I could have been suspended too. I didn't have all the evidence at the time. So, are you gonna tell me why you think I'm working for Sean Prescott? Pan Estates? I saw documents that you were hired to do surveillance and security at Pan Estates. God damn. You are a good detective. But I didn't get hired. I gave Sean Prescott an estimate. For my own reasons. Anyway, I think we can both agree it's been a hard week on all of us. Especially poor Kate Marsh. I... You did. You even made it to... I knew Kate was... That guy? Well... That's why I'm... Although... Chloe and I... Now, excuse me. All right. Sorry, Max. I can't talk and work. I wonder if David is going mm. to the party. Hey, Max. I do appreciate you standing up for me. What is out here? More dead birds. Anything? Oh, well, that's pointless. I bet I missed something. Oh, well, were the whales in this reality as well? Joyce really wants David and Chloe to be a family. Accept your offer of dinner and a movie. Maybe Chloe would like to come along. I'll call you later, Joyce. All right. Oh, I need to find a way to distract David. Okay. Something to do with his car. Um. How can I? I just... give up William, but defend David. <laughs> Chloe hate me if she knew. Did I actually cause that clock to stop? <laughs> oh, there's a ladybug stuck in the dials. Um, how can I distract him then? Was there something outside? There must be something outside that I missed. On something, anything. William never finished painting that wall. David even made sure to bag up the dead birds. There must be something out here for it. It's not. Sorry, but this is my official man cave, so no girl. Oh, that is a serious padlock on that locker. Hey, David, what you hiding? Hmm. Seven one seven, wasn't it? Oh, yes, how I do knew that number would be important? <laughs> how did I remember that? <laughs> the deepest reaches of my brain. I can't believe I remembered oh, that. Maps, 
notes, coordinates, photos of Kate, Nathan. Oh, yes. What? Into pictures of him beating on Warren. Following me. How Score. Back to Chloe now. How can. Oh, is that it? Oh. It's right. oh, Chloe! Are you ready yet? I have to get back to my dorm. Are we happy? Very happy. I hit the secret file jackpot. It's Kate, Nathan, and Rachel. Plus, there's some location coordinates. David is like a one-man surveillance army. Now, let's get the hell out of here before we get busted. But I absolutely have to go see Kate in the hospital right now. I want to find out how she's doing. See how Kate's doing. This is definitely Kate's floor. The hospitals always freak me out. I, I hear you. But imagine how Kate feels. I'm so glad I, I get to see her again. I hope it's not too weird for her. No, she'll be stoked to see you. Who wouldn't be? This be it. I'm a little nervous. Just go in there and be your friend. I'll wait out here so you can chill by yourselves. I was a total dick for blowing a fuse when you answered Kate's call the other day. Yes, you were. But then you ignored me. I had no idea what shit she was going through. And you saved her. Like me. I'm sorry. Thanks, Chloe. But don't be sorry. We're all on the same team. Team Max. <laughs> Let Kate know we're gonna string Nathan up by his balls then. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm on it. Uh -oh, I wonder if her family's going to be in there. Bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses or something. Max! Oh, Kate. I thought I'd never see you again. I feel so ridiculous. I'm so sorry. Kate. Listen to me. You have nothing to be sorry about. Other people do. You do not know how happy I am to see you. You look awesome. Is it a stupid question if I ask how you're doing? Now that you're here, I'm doing even better. I'm so grateful to you for coming up to the roof to talk me down. Max, I felt so lost and alone. When I saw how much you cared, how hard you were trying, you made me realize I wasn't alone. Thank you. Kate, there are so many people who love you and want to help you. I know. You should see all the letters and postcards. I gave most of the flowers to other patients here because they need them more than me. I'm keeping the balloons, though. One of the nurses gave me some pen and paper so I could do some drawings. I love your illustrations. They got kind of dark there for a while, but I have an idea for a new children's book about bullying. Awesome. I was thinking of having some photographs in there too. I hope that's a subtle hint that you'll let me take the photographs for the book. Was that subtle? You better take the pictures, Max. I'm going to be here for another day until my family comes out to visit. Oh, How are no. they treating you? Like they need to protect me forever. They're so upset. And I know they feel guilty, oh. even though they didn't do anything. Good. I was surprised how many students from Blackwell wrote me. Daniel, Mr. Jefferson, even Victoria wrote me a very sweet note. And I believe she was being real. Yeah. Me too. I'm glad you believe again, Kate. I'm working on it, Max. I just pray I can get this drawing right. Still an angers me when you think about people like filming with the camera when someone stood on a building about to do that. 
you know, it's just like people's attitudes towards like self harm and stuff like that and suicide. It's just ridiculous. Like if you saw someone who'd just been stabbed, or if you saw someone who had a heart, who was having a heart attack, you wouldn't get your film out and film them when they're on the verge of death. And that's what it was with Kate. And yeah, yeah. That is so sweet. Even Victoria signed. <laughs> but not Nathan. Victoria Chase might be queen bitch, but she's not evil. No, I don't know. I know you hate me and you should, but I only want to see you, you, your smile again. Please let me know if you need anything. Get lost, Victoria. What? Principal Wells knows how to step it up when he wants to. Just want to express my deepest wish for a speedy recovery and that Blackwell Academy is united in prayers for your return. The students and faculty have organised a rally in your honour and I've never seen such outpouring of academic and community support in, for any student in our history. I know my words may mean little given your circumstances, but it's important to know, it's important you know that we do care. If you need any assistance at all, please do not hesitate to ask Principal Wells. Thank you, sisters. You really saved Kate. Good to see that Kate is still working on her book report. I'm worried what's going to happen when her family come. Oh, I love Kate's happy rainbow flock. Bored cat. Let's have a little, uh, have a little sit. It's amazing to just sit here quiet with Kate again. I don't think I'll ever know how much destiny I'm changing. But. Whoever said we only have a single fate? Oh, time travel is such a mindfuck. I mean, I, I, I did uh, psychology at university and when we were doing philosophy of mind, I really enjoyed all the time discussions. Like my, my philosophical bent, I, I, believe in a, I believe in a singular fate. I don't believe in, um, I don't necessarily believe in free, in free will and everything. I, I believe that everything's gonna happen in a certain way. I don't mean that in like a cosmic sense. I mean that in like a pragmatic way. You know, you're only ever going to make a certain choice or a certain decision. You know, hard determinism and stuff like that. I won't go into it anymore, but... <laughs> I don't think get well is quite apropos. Those are nice flowers. And from Taylor? Wow, props to her. Who's Taylor? If this gets Kate through the night, so be it. All right, type of questions, Kate. That is so good to know that Kate is drunk. Kate, it is so good to hang out with you again. Max, I owe you so much. And I can tell you want to talk to me about something. Hmm. What about Victoria? I saw Victoria's letter. How does that make you feel? Max, I know Victoria can be... Uh... Not nice. But I do believe in forgiveness and redemption. I might be naive, but... I feel her struggle. Me too. I could have taken a picture of her covered in paint, but I didn't, and... We had a genuine moment. We all have our moments. Why do you think she acts so mean? I don't know if she's necessarily insecure. Or, or if that she's a bitch, but... 
I think it's more just that's how she thinks confident people act, like that it's a power struggle. Which I suppose probably has its root in insecurity, but yeah, I guess she's insecure. She's insecure. If you're comfortable with yourself, you don't need to act superior. Victoria doesn't look like she has much to be insecure about. If anybody could make Victoria see the light, it would be Kate Marsh. No, I think it will take more than that, Max. <laughs> right, what about you, Kate? I always want to talk to you. We missed our tea session this week. That was so not cool. We need to plan, like, a tea shop tour of Portland. Oh, yes. And you could bring Warren along, too. I don't know about that. No boys allowed. No boys allowed. <laughs> you are funny, Max. And right. What about Nathan? I want you to know I'm this close to getting all the info I need about Nathan. Nathan Prescott has to pay for what he did. And we have to stop him from hurting anybody else. Well, I did get his ass suspended, so that might be a start. You did? Oh, right on, Max. I love how fearless you are. So what is going on with him now? Prescott family? I think his family is totally protecting him. Or worse. I never say this about people, but Max, there's something evil about the Prescotts. They have something to do with death. <laughs> We're going to stop him. I just have to find Nathan's room number, get inside, and get the clues I need. Max, please let me help. I can get the number, and I'll text it to you, okay? Ooh. Of course, Kate. I can't do this without you. Now it's time for Nathan to watch out for us. I have to get back to our uh, mission. You don't know how much it means to see you again. I do. That's why I love you, Max. Thanks for taking care of my bunny. Tell Alice I'll see her soon. Hmm. Let's just see what she says if you had talked to her about the vortex. Quiet with Kate again. What? Kate. Max. Oh. Me too. We all. Victoria. If any. No. Was it not an important decision? That was so. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nathan. Well, you did. So what? The Vortex Club. I assume he'll show up at the Vortex Club party tonight like nothing happened. And nobody can do anything to him after what he did. We're going to stop him. I just have to find Nathan's room number, get inside, and get the clues I need. Max, please let me help. I can get the number and I'll text it to you. How? Okay? Of course, Kate. I can't do this without you. Now it's time for Nathan to watch out for us. I have to get back to our uh, mission. You don't know how much it means to see you again. I do. That's why I love you, Max. Thanks for taking care of my bunny. Tell Alice I'll see her soon. Hmm. The little dot disappeared. Is it this reflection? It's amazing to just sit here quiet with Kate again. I don't think I'll ever know how much destiny I'm changing. But whoever said we only have a single fate? Oh, time travel is such a mindfuck.
Yeah, it was. Interesting. Alright, see you later, Kate. Well, how is she? She's still Kate Marsh. Thank God. I'm glad we came to see her. Thanks for coming with me. Now let's go pay a visit to Nathan Prescott. That little prick is not going to be glad when he sees us. Alright guys, I think I'm going to have to leave that one there. So we we got some interesting interactions there. Um, spoke to David a bit, sort of reaffirmed what I th originally thought. I wasn't really that suspicious of him in the first place. I think he's just, like I said, I think he's investigating it himself. Just but he, because he's he has that sort of bullish mentality, it made it seem like he was um, more heavily involved. Um, yeah, we, we went to see Kate, which was really nice. Um, nice to see that she's doing well. Hopefully she doesn't do something silly by saying she can get the room number, so I hope she doesn't... I hope she doesn't get in touch with Victoria, basically. Uh, maybe I should have said that Victoria was a arch. Didn't say it was an important decision, though. They tend to warn you, don't they? So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, hit the like button if you did. Don't forget to subscribe and join Clan Drummond if you want to see more. Just remember guys, never trust an on-crate. I'll see you next time.